Um, so, uh, last session you guys had beached on a coast of uh, the Silent Isle. Again, had been described as a um, a rumored residence of some magisters known as the Hand of Egan. Um, those of you who rolled well enough would know that the Hand of Egan were basically um, a, uh, a circle of uh, wizard magisters under Egan the Emperor, a figurehead which may be familiar to some of you since his reign was within the past century or so. Um, and upon his fall, the Empire sort of scattered into the shattered realms that you all know as the the individual Arcadian kingdoms. But um, following that, uh, you guys basically um, moved along the coast. Uh, again, we're had a brief conversation with some folks from the village who questioned your appearance, but through some successful negotiation and with some uh, Colwyn mind tricks, you managed to slip past them. Um, uh, and so, uh, you guys were camped in the middle of a forest when you were attacked by wolves. Upon defeating one of them and its fresh blood spilling upon the ground, Moments later, you guys were assailed by a large white dragon. Um, rather than killing you off-right, however, um, it seems not to regard you all too highly, kind of presuming an aura that said it could probably kill you at any time. But again, through more negotiation, you discovered that its goal now its goal was to assemble an empire similar to one of its kin. And so in doing so, it made a deal with Ladon, saying that if Ladon could promise this dragon a kingdom before the next lunar eclipse, then she would let hit, she would grant him access to her resources. Otherwise, she would just eat him or whatever. Um, however, uh, you managed to negotiate a side deal in which if you procured an, a particular artifact for her, uh, that she would reconsider her ties to Ladon and uh, perhaps change her side. Uh, however, uh, she gave you the ultimatum that if you do not find this artifact within three days, um, she will consider your skills uh, less than apt and destroy your ship. Um, following that, um, with the only clue of this artifact being that it is a very extravagant sort of uh, vase. Um, certainly worth more than your uh, average piece of artistry. And the fact that it is located somewhere deep in the earth on this island. And so, with this knowledge, you ventured off looking for a cave upon the, uh, the eastern uh, cliffside when you found a kobold who seemed collapsed upon a dead tree branch. Um... You managed to procure him down, uh, discovered a few things. One was a ledger, uh, which Bumble had taken. Uh, he also had a, uh, a, a crudely crafted iron shiv. Um, and he also had an amulet around his neck depicting uh, uh, six keys kind of arced radially. And uh, if you look in your handouts, that's basically um, under symbols. Can you all see that? Oh, oh I can now. You can always hit the show to players button too. Yeah, I, I just did that. Um, but uh, you've currently concealed the amulet before his awakening. Um, I believe Kata has it. Um, and through through talks with this uh, rather antsy creature. Um, you discover that he was pushed from the high tower by um, one of the robed figures bearing the uh, amulets of the one-fingered hands around town. Uh, one of which you saw headed to Port Firebane the day before. And then um, he also expressed his uh, deep wishes to impress his queen with his powers granted unto him by the door god. Um, and he needs the symbol in order to do that. And so you struck a deal saying that if you if he led you to the mines, that perhaps the door god would uh, show him the way back to his amulet when on your way, 
you encountered this, or you encountered uh, this, this particular sighting. Um, two carts, one in the front, one with uh, another of the hooded figures seated on the coach. Um, the first cart seems to be carrying a large number of rocks, and from what you can tell, these rocks have um, quite obvious metal veins running through them. Um, the cart behind it, however, is more of a uh, more of like a caged prisoner cart. Uh, inside it, it's got a, uh, a small ensemble of individuals, uh, two white kobolds and uh, four men and women. And all around the cart, uh, you have the four uh, tall men commanders who are, um, again, the heavy hitters when you encountered them in Silmark, and uh, six of the smaller folk. Uh, deciding to hide away in the brush surrounding this path, uh, you guys, <laughs> unfortunately, were a bit too slow, and so some of you were a little more obvious than others. And so, uh, with Bumble being <laughs> sticking out like a sore thumb, the robed figure upon the cart kind of pointed a finger, again, his hooded visage turning and revealing, again, that's the familiar purple glow from under its, uh, from under its thick, dark cloak. And it said a single word. Kill him. And then a one of the small guards started moving towards Bumble. Um, and so let's take you all to the map, because I'll need you all to roll initially. Okay. Where are we? Uh, you guys are North. over here. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, to a good start. Uh, you all can see their uh, their their name tokens, right? Their name plates. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's tall man, tall man. Yeah, that's just to differentiate their types. Um, the two cobbles, right. are they in the cage? Yeah, so um, think of like a medieval prisoner cart. It's basically like yeah. a cage around the six of them. Um, uh, this over here is kind of like a cliff facing that um, rises up and is kind of on level with the top of the cart but uh, let's go ahead and roll for these guys uh, small guys are going to go first and then big, big guys go 12. And then can we adjust positioning any? I doubt Bumble. Uh, one would be right yeah, up you guys can adjust your positioning around here. Um, Swap I, actually, Bumble. I, yeah, basically how you would kind of p have positioned yourselves. Um, I don't think Colin yeah, would yeah. be up front. <laughs> uh, Kata, you currently have Knob on a leash, so he, he's with you. Yep. Um, Uh, currently, however, they don't seem to have noticed you, Athera. Um, the hooded figure, the hooded figure, as he kind of looks about, you can kind of sense that he seems to notice most of the party except for you. So you're still in stealth. Uh, but he needs to roll. He goes on seven. So. From the top of the round, uh, it is the small men. So, change up my music, something more combat oriented. Uh, it is going, almost in the back, but <coughs> seeing as this guy did notice the rest of you, uh, it is going to try a swipe at Kata. So. Uh, I assume a 24 hits you? Yes. Okay. Uh, you take four points of damage from its uh, small little short sword as it kind of sheaths it from its side and makes a quick slash. Uh, the rest of them, uh, 
Uh, one is gonna move up next to Colwyn. Uh, gonna go there, and then use his action to move there. Uh, this one in the back. Uh, move up to Oryx. Uh, this one is going to stay here. And then this one is going to stay here. Um, so I think the only one that can attack is the one next to Colwyn. So Colwyn, you will also receive an attack. Uh, I assume a 10 misses. Thankfully, yes. So you nimbly dodge. Uh, Bumble, it's now your turn. Uh, this ensemble of small men has encroached upon you. Small men look like, what, like little machines? They're basically, um, you've encountered them before in Silmark Square. Uh, they're basically just like uh, halfling-sized animated armors. Um, and you, you distinctly remember them being significantly weaker than the big guys. Um... All right, so uh, as in, seeing that there's many more of them than us, Bumble will attempt to kind of cause some confusion within the ranks. Uh... Trying to catch uh, the group of them still by the cart in a sticky messing of... Okay. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and draw that cube. It's, uh, you. Yeah, that's different. 20. That's not as big as I remember it being, but okay. Okay. This thing. That's a good question. Put it here. Big guys out of this one. All right. Uh, and so they'll go have to go ahead and make their reflex saves right now. Or is it at the, is it at the start of the turn to make their saves? Uh, um, uh, yeah, so it's on the start of their turn. So that's good. All right, so a nice spring of web is now covering a good portion of the car as well as the ground. That seems you've got these guys on Tangle. Uh, as for these fellas, uh, the first two tall men are going to roll for their saves. Uh, that looks like it's going to be a fail. That's a success. So this first one is restrained. And then we're going to have hooded figure roll one. And he is also in Webs are actually, actually not the start of the turn, but on the start of his turn, we'll just use that. This guy is going to move out from the webbing. Uh, and he's going to move over to Kata. Uh, does the webbing count as difficult terrain move through? I mean, you're, you're moving out of it, so it wouldn't matter. Okay. Um, well, that consumes 30 feet of movement. And so he still has room for an attack. Listen, I have the focus and attention of about a four-year-old on cough syrup. When I don't roll from initiative, I need people to slap me around and say, Allie, listen. I didn't even realize you didn't. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I just assumed. Sorry. Oh. No, you're good. I assume, too, because I keep forgetting <laughs> what my icon looks like. And so I saw small man, and I thought it was me. Uh, Okay. And then I realized I didn't think I would remember rolling anything, and I was like, I don't remember being in combat when we ended last time. Actually, uh, that does bring up something. Oryx, what's your dex mod? Uh, one, probably. Hold on. There is a setting one. that you can set to put your... Uh, uh, okay, so you, so you would have gone before yeah, uh, the big guys. So, rewind. Yeah. Athera, it's your turn. My bad, sorry. I really didn't mean to. 
It's so fine. <laughs> I mean, they're stuck anyways. So, am I punching things? Is that a good solution? I like that solution. I'm gonna cast Produce Flame. Okay. Um, okay. 30 feet. Uh, which one? That one. Okay. Uh, 12 on that one is going to just barely miss. Damn. So, <laughs> flame erupts from your hands, but it just kind of uh, scales over the armor, leaving some of it blackened, but it doesn't seem to have left much damage. Boys make such good sound effects. That's not something girls can do. <laughs> uh, Go you on, ask me what sound a gun makes. I'll tell you. Pew pew. Pew pew. <laughs> uh, but you still have your movement. Mm, my movement's good besides Bumble here. Okay. Orox. Is gonna check position a little. Uh, yeah, no, can't do that. Alright, so we will draw both scimitars and, or I guess the scimitar and the short sword and try and cut this guy up. Okay. The guy to well, the only guy I can hit, I should say. Uh, first one's gonna miss. Second one's gonna hit. Alrighty. Oh. And then, uh, I don't remember if it's. Oh no, yeah, it's you can just do a guarded step or whatever in five E. There's no um, AOs from moving around someone. That's right. Now I remember. All right. Uh, then I will scoot to here. All right. So you managed to get a good hack into its arm with a king. Talman's turn. Uh, again, that one's webbed. This one is going to move out. And then move up next to Kata. And is going to roll for an attack. Uh, does a 16 hit you, Kata? Yes. Okay. Um, I need better armor, guys. I mean, it's it's pretty good, but uh, you'll take 7 damage as this uh, Tallman's heavy gauntlet just comes walloping at you, and you kind of feel it put a heavy pressure against your chest. Um, these guys in the back... Uh, are gonna move. One's gonna move up right in front of Oryx. Um, and the other is going to. Sixty feet. So he's just gonna move here. Um, but that's all they can do on their turns. Colwyn. All right, uh, let's see. Let's time. It's time to get artistic. So uh, he is going to uh, once again put his hand to his temple, his fingers to his temple, and start creating walls. Okay. 10, 20, 30, 40. I think that'll work. Okay. And uh, let's see. He will come up to uh, block off the rest of the group. Sounds good. So you've set up that barrier. Kata, there's now a shimmering wall of psychic energy. Uh shielding you from the tall men. You have the small guy at your side and not who's kind yeah. of whimpering in fear behind you. I'm gonna take a step back from the wall. Um, kind of like throwing knobs rope behind me as I do so. Take out my great sword and try to chop the small man in half. Okay. Uh, before I do so, 
Or actually, no, I'm pretty good. Just jet. Let me just chop him. Wow. I'm happy I didn't do the thing that I was gonna do. Um. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so you make a good swing with your sword. Unfortunately, you aim a little too high. You kind of, um, you do chop a bit of the plumage from the small man's helmet off. Uh, but that's the most your swing can do. Uh, Nob, in the meantime, as you kind of release the leash, is going to um, withdraw. And kind of like one of those, um, those Arctic foxes is going to swan dive into the snow with a... You kind of see its uh, hind legs and tail just kind of sticking up from this. Uh... Bumble, grab his rope! <laughs> well, it's basically just like uh, doing as an ostrich and hiding its head in the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, however, uh, it is this guy's turn. Uh, he failed his deck save in advance. Uh, I don't believe the web... Oh, Creature restrained by the webs can use its actions. Try to check it out. Um, it doesn't say the webs prevent spell cast. They don't block sight. You can cast just fine. So you want to pose any kind of disadvantage for being stuck in sticky webbing. Static stuff goes. Uh. Your flavor though. Well, he's seated on the coach, so. Sure, we'll go ahead and give him uh, concentration. So that's a d20 plus spell casting. Concentration is just a con check. Okay. Plus. And it's, against, it's against the uh, the spell DC. Concentration check is traditionally just a DC 10, or from damage you've taken. So it's really whatever you want to make it. And okay. or the DC of the spell. It's a so that's probably, rules right now. Probably 10. Uh, so his arms are too caught up in this web to cast anything. Uh, the small man. Uh, they are not terribly bright. They're simply following orders, so they're going to hack at the psychic wall. Um, the psychic wall has an AC of 5. 10. 10. Uh, one one seems to be unable to even hit the psychic wall. That's good. <laughs> um, uh, but two more are basically going to come over. Uh, yep, that's the max of its movement. Be two more attacks. Oh, and another. <laughs> so two hits managed to land in against this psychic wall. Um, uh, one dealing five damage, another dealing five damage. So that would be uh, this one right here, and then this one right here. How much? How much health does the wall have? Ten points each for each ten foot length. Okay. So AC ten, ten hit points, ten feet. So if it's a five foot, well, actually, so if you break the ten feet, does the whole ten feet crumble? The whole ten feet crumbles. Yeah. Okay, so... So they're halfway through the 10 feet. Yeah, we'll just, uh... We'll do this. Do you see those red marks just yep. fine? So that, that's just showing that the walls crack. Um, cool. uh, Kata's got a small man next to her, and... Oryx and Colwyn have a small man. To her. So both of those guys are going to make attacks. Want first one's against Kata. Uh, nine's probably going to miss. Whoosh. Uh, next one is going against Oryx. I assume a nine also misses. Guys are managing to dodge these pretty well. With that, it goes to Bumble. Well, I guess we have to pull out all the stops anyway, so... Here. Uh, where are you casting this? In the web? Okay. Behind these guys. 
It's gonna slam into the tall man that is directly south of Arox. Okay, so he's gonna roll his dex save. Going to fail. Uh, so he will take the full nine damage as a just to singe some of his arm. <laughs> Actually, probably his armor starts to begin to glow an orange red just from the heat. But uh, are you staying where you are? Yeah, I don't have any. Okay. So you're kind of melting away at the tall man. Uh, and we go to Athera. All right. Well, I'm going to move. And I'm going to come up here. And then I'm going to pretty slam that guy who's just south of me. All right. Uh, that is going to hit him. Of course, you ignore the crit damage there since that was not with advantage. I'll be right back after it's party. Okay. Um, but with your produced flame, um, it hits the small man. He basically just explodes into a series of uh, now broken and shattered small armor pieces. We go to Oryx. Uh, there's no ready action in D&D, is there? You can prepare a standard. Yeah. yeah. It cool. eats up your reaction of next round. It eats my reaction of next, next round. Uh, I don't know if that's fucking worth it then. What do we got for spells? Oh, are these walls broken anywhere? They, they're they cracked. Um, yeah, basically they're <laughs> at half their health, so right. another yeah. whack and they'll be, bro they'll be down. In that case, uh... I really gotta redo this fucking spell list. Uh, alright, well, I guess I will... ...continue to stand where I am and, uh... ...ready in action to... ...or prepare in action to hit the tall man when he... ...breaks through the shield. Sounds good. Um, and they are certainly going to do so. First off, the one in the web is going to roll another deck save, which he makes. Um, so he is going to he's going to stand here. He's not really going to move any further. No longer web. Uh, let's see, the one to the south of Kata is going to make a strike at the wall. And that's going to hit. And that's going to shatter it. Um, Which one? Uh, the one south of Kata. Okay. Uh, quick question. In 5e, you can do attack, move, and then... Move again, yes. Yep. Okay. So, it doesn't get another attack, but it is going to step forward and be next to Kata. Um... Oh, if it breaks one, does it shatter everywhere? Oh, oh I see. No, he, he had to redraw it because it was all one line. Gotcha. Wishful thinking. <laughs> Um, the other tall man is going to uh, attack the wall south of Oryx, and it just hits it. So that's going to shatter it. Hello, friend. Uh, and that is going to hit. So that's the one that's currently being melted. It's going to take another six damage from you. Your metal blade just cling, cling off its armor. The tall man that just attacked the wall south of Arx turned adjacent to a sphere, takes down. Uh, okay. So I have to make another deck save. She fails. 
get to the moon knight. Um, at this point, it looks like one of his arms is just about to melt off. Uh, however, it is still standing. And with its second attack, going to try and hit you for it. Does a 12 hit? Negative. All right, so you managed to nimbly dodge that heavy fist. Um, Tallman to its right is going to make two strikes at the psychic wall. Uh, and it's a natural one. See? <laughs> so it's no joke. Uh, but the second fist is going to hit. Uh, but it is only going to take eight damage. So this wall is actually still up. Nice. Uh, and I think, yep, that's all of them. So now it goes to you, Colwyn. <laughs> all right. Anything that ended its turn next to that. Oh, anything. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's gonna... Go ahead. Uh, yep, fail that. So it's going to take that seven fire damage. There's two guys here. Or the... Have to do that. They're at the top of the round, so definitely. Uh... Did they go yet? They're the 20 up there. They're literally as high in the round as you can get. But they went before Bumble did. So, not yet. Yeah, so I think at the, oh, at, at, right. at, on their turn, they'll have to make the saves. Yeah, okay. yeah I forgot that we just got it. Okie dokie. So, uh, but this guy, this guy is... Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep him occupied and uh, try to confuse him with some spiffy spear work. Okay. So who's oh. tap dancing? That's spiffy. Spiffy. Fantastic. So that's the one directly south of you? Yes. Uh, you... You basically just destroy it. <laughs> Before he gets damage from the fire... Sorry, Mark. Oh, that is good. <laughs> Alright, he will stay put. Alright, yeah, just... It just, again, your spear penetrates and it just explodes into a debris of... Uh, now broken and shattered metal parts. And that goes to you, Kata. Alright. Bonus action, I'm gonna... Initiate my fighting spirit! Okay. So she just... lets out a battle cry. And turns to this small man next to her. And attacks him, so I have advantage. Okay. Lay into him. Which I didn't eat, but I'll take the temperature. Uh, that hits, and that immediately cleaves him. That's a little person. <laughs> and then I'm going to move this way. Okay. Uh, okay. Sounds good. It is this guy. Um, he is going to... Roll a deck save to try and get out of these webs. Touches. So he, ju he just barely manages to kind of it's a pull himself from the webs. Strength check. Oh, it's strength. Uh, then that is... That's going to be an 11. Still stuck. Okay. Uh, and that requires an action. So he's still stuck. So the small guys, uh, one is going to attack the remaining wall next to Oryx. That's going to hit. That's going to shatter it. And uh, with its movement, is going to move up behind um, that's what it can do this one south of Colwyn going to move up and make a strike against him does, uh, does a 10 hit does not Okay, so you managed to dodge that one. I'm on low tonight. And then 
This small man is going to move up to Kata. Oh, that's right. Gotta make its reflex. <laughs> It'll take that three damage. These creatures don't seem to be much inclined to feel pain, so it, it, even though the fireball is uh, kind of right there and scorching the backs of them, they don't really seem to pay it much mind, despite it slowly eroding away. Uh, but one's going to make another strike at Kata uh, for a 13. I miss it. Like... Okay. Uh, I think that's all of them. Yep, so now it becomes Bumble's turn. All right, with these creatures hammering at the, the invisible wall trying to get to uh, Arcs, Bumble will direct the flame into the back of the knees of the Iron Guardian who's directly south of Arcs. Bonus action. Okay. And it fails. Oh, it's tough. Six. He's, he's he's starting to fall apart. Screws. And as a standard action, he will uh, look at the smaller creature that is behind Oryx and step over, grasp it with uh, locking hands. Okay. Alrighty. Fucking hands, uh, uh tax about. Um. Okay. Yeah, it's certainly just because it's like metal. Your electric shock kind of creates a pseudo electromagnet, and so its li its uh, limbs seem to kind of stiffen up and can't quite get you as you move out of the way. All right, so that's your turn, Athera. I shoot the thingy. Which thingy? The one north of uh, Oryx? Okay. Yeah. That's that's gonna hit. Not well, but it hit. Yep, doing damage. Three point counts. Hurt. Oryx, you are kind of, well, you're not surrounded on all sides, but you're definitely flanked at the moment. Moment to your back, big man to your front. Mm, fun times. It sounds like Rx is typical Saturday nights. <laughs> uh, we're going to double slash at the guy in front. If the first one fells him, we will pivot and hit the one to the left of him. Sounds good. Uh, first, first one is going to miss. Clang! 25 will hit and will defeat him. So you managed to kind of get your blade right in between some of the crevices of its armor. And in doing so, you kind of cut some of the straps that just kind of falls into a heap of itself with the helmet kind of landing with a comical poof on top. Uh, are you uh, are you going to use your any of your move action? Um, no, I'm I'm good. I think because there's you know three people surrounding me. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, all guys are next. Um, they seem to pause for a moment, um, as though kind of awaiting something, and then kind of with with a mechanical twitch from all of them. Uh, one of them is going to move past Kata. So Kata, you will get an attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, let me just read, double check my wording on this. Until the end of current turn. Okay. That sucks. Right, I'll just attack him. Oh, and did he pass through him as well? Uh, mm -hmm. no. He would have... <laughs> up. Yeah, ba or basically over. up and towards you, Bumble. Um, curious if you... Uh, but it's going to take that 11 damage. 
So you get a nice uh, slash with your sword into its flank, and so there's a bit of metal kind of jut and split apart. However, uh, upon standing before the small gnome, is going to kind of rear back and try and slam one of its fists. Uh, 16. 19. Okay, so boom! Kind of bounces off your shield. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one... Next to Oryx is going to... Uh, move out of Oryx's range. So Oryx, you will get an attack of opportunity. Okie doke. Sounds about right for this evening. Ping. Um, that unfortunately misses and is going to lay a punch into a Thera. Uh, with a 17. I assume that hits. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, you're going to take nine damage as this one just kind of clocks you into the shoulder. You can kind of feel as though it were on the verge of cracking one of your collarbones. Uh, let's see. And then the final one. Uh, it is going to uh, get into a runner's stance and basically leap over the small man and attempt to drop kick Colwyn. So it's going to have to roll an acrobatics. And so in doing so, it actually falls on top of the small man. Uh, <laughs> and because of its heavy weight, it's basically going to make them both prone. Uh, we'll just... You can kind of hear the robed figure shout from on top of its webbed cart. Ah, you lousy bunch of bolts! And then becomes your turn, Colwyn. <laughs> All right, so Colwyn is going to use uh, something called recognition. And... Uh... Basically, that gives him like an extra D6 or D4 or something. It's like bless, personal bless, uh, to add to any rolls. So what he wants to do um, at seeing him kind of dive up, raise his legs and drop down on the smaller uh, mechanized armor, uh, he's going to raise his spear and kind of jump up and thrust the spear right down to see if he can get both of them right in the chest. Uh, okay, uh, roll an attack. Um, well, well, attack. If the first one hits, you can roll a second. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll a second one. Okay. And he gets a d6 to hit for, or a d4 to add to that second one if he wants it. Uh, yeah. Also 18. True. So he'll take that fire damage. Uh, he'll make it, so he only takes three. Uh, however, uh, Colwyn deals nine damage as it punctures through the breastplate. Um, and with such a driving force that actually... Uh, <laughs> Defeats the one trapped underneath it. Doing just enough damage. So he's going to take nine. And the one below him is dead. Kata. Yeah, I don't like the fact that that big one went running back there like that. Um, I wish I had extra attacks already. Uh, let me go <laughs> ahead and hit this guy south of me. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, that's going to just hit him. Deal 13. And he is... Oh, oh, the south of you. Yeah. Oh, no, that yeah, that destroys him immediately. All right. I, stuff. Um, I'm gonna make the decision to come up here. Okay. Actually, hold on. Yep. Perfect. I'll let me turn. Sounds good. Uh, so it is still webbing, but uh, you are right up in his face. So, uh, get caught in that stuff. Right. Yeah. Which is my end of my turn now. So. So do you see? You know what? Um, fuck, I'm going to do it, because I can, before what? the end of my turn. Bonus action, action surge, and oh. smack this guy. Okay. Uh, so that's 22? Yep, for nine. That'll hit him. Kind of cut right through his robes. And then I'm going to look him right in the eye as I pull the sword back that's covered in his blood. Call them off! Now! Um, as you're up close and able to see under his hood, um, what you see is what resembles a ghastly image of someone human. Their skin is a pale... Uh, sh sheikish white um, as though all life has been drained from them their eyes are kind of sunken in with dark black circles um, emitting to several nights without sleep or rest their lips are pursed and dry um, and just the sheer just the sheer image of this under these robes is enough to kind of sh stir a shiver of shock and Slight disturbance in you. Um, however, it is on its turn. It is going to. Let's see. Options. Uh, we probably do need that. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What's he gonna do? Uh, well. Yeah, first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna try and cast a spell on himself. Um, and so he's gotta beat DC, which he does. Um, so you see him cast a spell and immediately thereafter you kind of start to see as he moves um, slight after images begin to form and uh, that's all he can do right now Uh, there's only one small guy left. And that's the one north of Oryx. Uh, however, is going to move up. That will prompt an attack from both Colwyn and Oryx. Uh, that will hit. Uh, actually, that will destroy it. So it only makes it that far for you kind of get a nice slashing across its back and it kind of splits across the waist. 
Uh, Forks for me. Those are all the small guys. So those are done. Bumble. Alright. Um, well, the fire will slam into the, the larger iron dude here. Alright. Six. Points of damage. Four points. And then your turn. Talking hands, the one immediately south of himself. Okay. Smite uh, out of metal, it has disadvantage on its save. 15 is actually going to miss. Let me verify the text. One second. <clears throat> Touches against its armor class, right? Yeah, um, there's something about if it's made out of metal, though. Oh, okay. Like, if, if you get advantage? You have advantage on the attack roll if the target is wearing armor made of metal. Okay, so that does hit. And, uh... You'll, uh... Move over towards Athera, trying to get the uh, other Talman's attention. Okay. I was very at it. <laughs> Traditional Bumble fashion. Hmm. Athera. You're currently next uh, to one of these things. And your uh, shoulder's yeah. kind of hurting. Yep. Yeah, well, I'm going to reduce flame at him. Alright. But this time, of course, is a melee. Ho! Oh! Jesus. So you definitely get that eight damage in. Jeez. Starting to look a little worse for wear. Is there some sort of movement I can make that makes me so I don't provoke when I step away? Take your full action to do it. Mm, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you can move, but it would possibly provoke. Yeah, no, I'm not worried about that. I will stay here then. All right. Orux. Um, I can't acrobatics or anything like that to not provoke, I'm guessing. What Since, are you looking to do? Uh, well, these two guys that are on the fucking ground, are they in any position to provoke? Or to, to take attacks of opportunity, rather? Uh... I don't think you can do an attack of opportunity from the ground, can you? I have no idea. Yeah, I think yeah. that's up to you. If you say uh, no, I'm good with no. Well, I was I would say seeing as Colwyn's spear is directly piercing through it and kind of keeping it skewered against the ground, I'll say it won't for this time, and then we'll look at the rules later. Wait, sounds good. So uh, Arx is going to nod at Colwyn and then... Um lunge sideways into a quick little somersault and then come up out of the somersault trying to carve this tall man in two. Okay. Uh... I do end up oh. flanking. I don't know if that counts as advantage. Uh, well, you, you get the extra D4. Right. Okay. For the attack? Yep. Uh, 15. 15 is just barely gonna miss. Okay, well, um, I still got the 23, so... I still got the 23, so you do deal a nice chunk of damage. Um, a few straps snap from the cleave of your blade. And hopefully that got his attention. Yep. Uh... Uh, this guy... All right, so one is going to um, grab the shaft of your spear, Colwyn, and kind of begin to forcefully pull it out from its chest as it begins to rise. Um, and it now stands looming over you, attempting to deliver a punch. I assume that hits. Delivery accepted. <laughs> 
Uh, you take nine damage as it kind of cracks into the side of your hip. One sec, I might have a thing. I have no thing. I'm going to take the nine. All right. Uh, this guy is going to move down and it seems to be ignorant of your slash oryx both of them kind of looking down upon bumble oh that's true flaming sphere it fails actually i think that yep that destroys it oh did that happen before the punch or after the punch after after so it, it kind of deals the damage and then as you're watching it just kind of explodes in this fiery uh destruction Uh, but, Bumble, you're going to get wailed on. So you're gonna, uh, you're gonna get, let's see. So it took a five foot steps. So yes, they can both do attacks. 11 and 15 from the first one. Another, I'm at 19. 19 and 18. So you kind of put your like your hands up, and you're kind of shielding on both sides as these fists just come wailing and pounding into the shield. Um, even the pressure alone is enough to make your knees kind of wobble. Um, one of them does manage to kind of crack through, however, and give you 14 points of damage. Ow. Um... And as they continue to do so, the hooded figure looks to you, Kata. Call off your friends, or I shall kill one of them. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kata's like, I don't know these fucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Colwyn. All right, so um, I got whacked pretty good, so I'm trying to still concentrate on this uh, recognition. And see what happened. Okay. No, cool. yeah, that's so a good point. It. Uh, so, since I can still gain that, I'm going to step up here and use the freed spear that hopefully has like a still burning piece of metal on it. And, oh, yeah. Like the tip is like nice and fiery hot. Exactly. And uh, let's try to get this guy. Okay. Um, so is the, oh, is the D4 just from Bless? Um, all right. Uh, That's just back road. I forgot. Good. Um, I was, I will say that because the tip of your spear is fiery hot, go ahead and roll a D3 for some extra fire damage. Yeah, so you definitely sink that right in. So it's going to take eight damage. Looking a little roughed up. And it becomes your turn, Kata. All right. Let me see what I can do here. I'm going to use my action surge. I don't want to fight each spirit because I still have my temporary hit points. So, yeah, I'm just going to attack this guy. Okay. I told you to call off your people. Sh shove them with my sword. Okay. <laughs> 24 will hit. Uh... Dean. I told you ah! first. <laughs> Does the fate of your friend not concern you? You can handle yourself, but can you handle yourself? And I twist the blade. Ah! Um. Uh, go ahead and roll an intimidation check. Okay. Uh. Or whatever. Yeah. No. It's not quite. 
Uh, he is going to attempt another casting. He does have disadvantage on attack because he's within five feet of me. Oh, sorry. Uh, I believe that's right, right? For 5e? Only if it's a ranged attack. If it's, well, like it, a, it's a ranged spell. Yeah, but does it does it have a two hit? Or is it like a save? It's a save spell. Then no. Oh, okay. So the web drops. Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, so he he's still in the vicinity of you, so he still has to make a concentration, correct? Or can he just cast it? Cast. There's nothing. There's, there's no concentration in 5e. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Then. Uh, uh, no, there's no defensive casting in 5e. Casting doesn't provoke. 20 foot radius. Fireball time. Uh, not quite, but probably not going to be as pleasant. Um. Just trying to. S That's about right, right? Be like a forty-foot diameter. Can't see if you do. Uh, yeah. If you turn right. on a point, it's over there. Yep. So yeah, yeah that should be correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, he. So as he kind of points over there. A great big yellowish noxious cloud erupts and forms around all of you except Kata. Um, each creature within the cloud, sorry, of its turn needs to make a constitution saving throw against poison. Um, heavily obscured, cloud lingers in the air. Uh, so yeah, that's over there. Save success. But does it deal damage? What? No. Yeah. Is it stinking cloud? Because that's yeah. just nauseate. Yeah, it's stinking cloud. Actually, I have no idea what the fucking 5e version is. It says safe success is half damage and not blinded. Because I'm looking at the 5e thing. What, what's the name of the spell? No, no, no. Here, hold on, hold on. I got you. There you go. Each key. So we just, we can't do anything with our action on that turn. Basically. So it will be at the start of your turns. Yeah, so it's literally just staggered. Yep. Um, these guys are done with. Bumble, go ahead and roll your constitution save. Uh, that is going to fail as you begin to retch and gag from the horrible stench of this cloud. You can still move, however. It just says it takes your action. Yep. Just takes my action away? Yeah. Yep. On a failed save, the creature spends its action that turn, retching and reeling. Okay. So, I'm, fail. I'm totally okay with that. As a bonus action, the sphere will roll around. Uh, and... uh, this is a heavily obscuring... Thing, so you cannot presently see even something like, immediately adjacent to me. Uh, I guess oh, you can true. always see the thing next to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you can move that fireball, the one next to you. Which one, left or right? Um. Yeah. No. Never mind that. I didn't realize. Yeah, because you yet. don't want to roast us, do you? Oh, I don't want to uh, blow the cobbled up. There. Um, so I will disengage. Uh, can okay. I do that? No. No, I can't. I think that takes your standard. So I will sit here and uh, twirl my thumbs. Okay. Might not be. Why? Okay. Uh, Athera. I have to make a con save. Con save against spellcaster DC. Uh, that is going to fail. So you are also succumbed to the horrible stench that is this cloud. 
Okay. Uh, you still have your movement, however. Well, I can't really move without provoking. All right. You know, I'm stuck here. Unless I can full round get away. Um, well, you would have spent your action. So basically, because you're nauseated, you can't disengage. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not yeah. doing anything. All right. Or us. Um, make, a, make a con save. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck, I clicked on the wrong window. Uh, that succeeds. Alrighty. Now I have a question for you, actually. Okay. Um, the so this cloud. Uh, never mind. That wouldn't make any sense now that I'm thinking about it more critically. Uh, I was gonna say, could I breath weapon it and hopefully, you know, burn it up? But wouldn't actually do that because that doesn't make sense. Uh, so and in that it, case, and if it did ignite, that would probably have unfortunate consequences. Right, exactly. <laughs> so we'll scoot over to here, and uh, we're going to start on the guy on the right and move to the guy on the left if he dies. Okay. Actually, how bad is a Thera looking? I mean, um, I look like I'm um, somewhat well, hurt. We can't see your health bar is what we're asking. Oh, yeah. I can't um, see Kata or Athera's, actually. Do you want to open theirs up? Because I can see everybody else's. I think it's just because they were newer characters. So, you know, didn't get adjusted that way when we brought them in. I can see yeah. everybody's but Kata's. Exactly. Anyways, I'm about half healthish, a little bit more than half health. I'm not that bad off. I could probably take another hit, but... I'm just debating. Bumble, do you need a cure, or should I just go in on these guys? Offense is better than defense. Okay, oh, let's make with the cutting. Uh, 25 will hit, and that's on the one... On the right. On the right. Um, so that is... I'm going to deal damage. Oh, and I'm also, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, like I'm not a fucking idiot. Going to use my uh, b -b 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 blade for blade flourish ability that is slashing flourish, and it makes it so that all. Just kidding. That's a really <laughs> poor wording for that. Who the fuck wrote this? All targets <laughs> within five feet of you take damage for the number rolled. Get the fuck out of here. Never mind. I'm done. Targets. You choose your targets. I. Can I choose targets? Or is it just everybody? I would say every creature. If it... Oh, yeah. okay. Well, in that case, yeah. I'll blade flourish and do some uh, slashing flourish and get both of these guys four. I think we're still level four. So. Yeah. Both of them take an extra six damage. Uh, you didn't hit the one on the left, but it, it is it's just automatic. This is automatic if I hit with the initial attack. Okay. Um, well, so you hit with the first one. You got the one on the right. So because you did that, you also get the one on the left? Yes, but only for the six. So he doesn't get the second hit in there. Like, he doesn't get the 15 and the eight damage for it. He just takes the six. All right. Uh, how would you like to do this? All righty. Uh, so Arx kind of... Arx hops to the side and gives his blades a twirl as though he's going to slash at the both of them and then abruptly just sticks both swords out and skewers the pair of them straight through the breastplate, uh, pulling the breastplate back out with them so they fall into pieces. Gotcha. Um, yeah, and they're kind of in the midst of going for another final wail on Bumble. Given how badly Bumble looks, you managed to do this just in time. And as you say, they shatter and skewer into separated armored bits. Uh, 
So it, they are done with. Colvin, make a constitution save. All right. I get to add that uh, recognition thing. Okay. I don't think that's going to help. Doesn't look like it. Yep. Nevertheless, I can still get out of here, right? Uh, yes, you are not in a threatened area. So you're, you're kind of having to like hold your hand to your mouth to prevent from breathing in this gas. Yeah, I come uh, blazing out of this smoke, coughing and hacking and um, kind of down, crouching, hands on knees, just retching, and I see Kata with her sword inside this guy. Okay. Yeah, you emerge from the noxious fumes to find the scene before you. Speaking of, Kata. Alright. Um, I can't see in the clouds. I don't know these guys are dead. I think they're still up and running around. So, I'm just gonna laugh a little bit at this guy. Give him a glare. And remind him. I said, call them off! And once again, cut him with the sword. Okay. I missed. 12 is actually going to miss him. Yeah. Uh, he ma- he, he kind of manages to like lift his shins up as you kind of slice for them. Because he's still sitting like, high on this coach. Um, but you can see him grimace as he looks into the noxious cloud. He's going to try and cast a spell on himself again. Um, which I think he can just do now. As long as it's not uh, concentration. Uh, let's look it up. Concentration, the previous spell drops. Buzz 5e has no attack uh, opportunity. It, it is concentration, it. but... Uh, the stinking cloud... Also concentration. It's also... Is it? Yes. Yes. Where does it say that? Duration. It say it in the concentration up to a minute. Duration. Oh, duration. Okay. Yeah, you can actually pull them up in the compendium thing here as well, and it'll show you. That's what I'm pulling these things off of. Well, that's what I was looking at, but um, it didn't say concentration anywhere. But he is going to try and. He's going to try and do that, so he's going to have to make the constitution roll. Uh, and fail. Well, why are you making the roll? Are you, you, if you're casting something else with concentration, it just automatically ends the first one. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, so, with that, the stinking cloud will vanish as... His feet seem to move at a rather blurry pace. And uh, he is going to try and run away expeditiously. Okay. Um, and that will provoke, as he would have used an action to cast. That will be a miss. Um, so, this begs the question. See, he is now rather quickly running off from the guys that you had just walked in on. Um, the question is, do you go after him? How far away does it get? Uh, yep. So he's kind of he is currently at sixty feet. Like two squares off. Of yeah. If nothing else, the casters are lobbing firebolts at him. Wait, he's only two squares off the map? Bro, let me tell you about how fucking classless you look in that shitty-ass robe. Well, um, I mean, I think everyone can go before him, so we all get a chance to do some sort of... Yeah, so so he, let's keep to initiative. Okay. So he just ran off. He's about two squares off, right? Yeah. You have any small men left to go? Nope, everyone is down. So, Bumble. Alright. Uh, so, 
Yeah, so he's... He's probably within range for most of your spells. What do you wish to do? Oh, no, he's definitely in range for a lot of our spells, because some of those things are 120 speed. Yep. Um, how, how bad do you look when he's running away? Uh, he kind of has, like, one major gash in his robes from a slash Kata gave to him, but as he's running, he also has a number of images that seem to kind of follow him in pace, as well as his expeditious speed. Bumble will move closer, so he's within 60 feet. Actually, going to cast no. Grease underneath him. Okay. He's going to deck save. Cast a banana peel under that man. Uh, he makes it. The fireball, the flaming sphere moves uh, 30 feet closer to him. All right. Thera. That's me. That's you. Running away. Um. Two squares off of that. What? Yeah, so basically, basically, surely I have a spell for this. Tangle. Apparently, entangle is not one of them. Spike growth. If it's as badass in 5e as it is in Pathfinder, fucking do it up. It, it's, it's more painful in 5e. Oh, yes. Radius and a point, and sprouts and stuff. It's Difficult it, terrain. It, it's shaped like a fireball. Cuts damage. All right. 150 feet is my range. Yeah, he's definitely within range. Oh my god, it takes 2d4 for every 5 feet it travels. Rip this guy. Yeah. Put it all in front of him. Yeah, so you, you <laughs> cast that sucker, so like only like this much is behind him, and the rest of it's in front of him. Yeah, I do that so that. Oh, he's down there. Sorry. When I heard off the map. I assume the opposite yeah. direction. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll cast it so that it's just like starting right beside, or like right where he is. Like I'll cast it so it's on him, but he's just on the very starting edge of it. So if he wants to keep running, he has to run through the whole thing. Okay. So he's, he's got about seven squares of that stuff in front of him. Uh, all right. There's no check to resist either. It's no. just well, two d four. Yeah, it just happened. It's just straight up. For, uh... That's when he moves through it. Nothing happens right now. It's only when he moves. And yes, he, he actually has to make a check to notice it. Jesus, all right. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, uh, that, that's when it's cast uh, without you seeing it. Like a, like uh, well, he does have a hood on. He's not really looking. No, no, no. Uh, any creature that can't see it or can't see the area at the time the spell's being cast, he can see the area while it's being cast, so he can see the magic happening. Yeah. Yeah. So you can start to see the spiky growth start to appear underneath his feet. Yep. So either he has to change direction and will be slowed by that, or you know, he has to go yeah. through it if he wants to stay his current trajectory. Sounds good. All right. So that's that. Or uh, he does. Okay, that's one. Never mind. Can you charge in 5e? No. Yeah. Can't you? No. No, it's a, you have to pick a feat. Oh. That said, Sweet. there's nothing keeping you from just moving and attacking. Just not your double move and attack. Okay, that's what I thought. Alrighty, then we will, uh, we're gonna move 30 feet over here, hang out by this rock, kind of lean against it casually, as uh, <laughs> Arx mentions. You know, these days you're really supposed to accessorize when you're wearing that sort of baggy burlap sack. <laughs> so mock him. <laughs> Uh, wisdom. That was got? max damage too, not bad. Oh, he doesn't have anything to that save. So, uh... <laughs> so in the midst of his panicked run away from you guys, you managed to make him rethink his fashion sense. <laughs> Listen, man, you always gotta be ready for a fight. Any kind of fight. Even a psychological war. 
<laughs> he takes damage from that. Uh, Tallmans are down. Colwyn. Someone said psychological war. All right. <laughs> oh, God. Do it up. Bring it, my guy. Uh, we're going to thrust his mind a bit. Thank you. That's what we do. That's good damage, damn. Well, he does have, have a mod for intelligence. Uh, wait, hold on. Wow. Okay, <laughs> never mind. It doesn't fucking matter, I guess. Let me just double check that Vicious Mockery doesn't do something to a save. It just attack rolls. Um, as you try to do this mental damage to him and kind of reach into his brain, you feel a familiar presence already in there. Um, and as you try to kind of like seep in through and deal damage, it kind of like backhands you out. Oh. Uh, that's basically just the nat 20. Kata. <laughs> All right. I'm going to drop my greatsword, pull out a javelin, and just take a running start 30 uh, feet toward him. O Olympic lob? Olympic lob time. Fighting spirit, so I have advantage. Okay. <laughs> ah! You didn't even fucking need it. No, I didn't. What a hero. <laughs> Max damage, too. <laughs> Jesus. I'm not fucking around with this guy. So, it kind of goes through the air and just like, just goes through his torso. So, like, he's got a javelin in him now. And on I his... suggest you stop! Uh. Well, he has no intention of going quietly. So. <laughs> so, so he can't even make a save as he runs through the spiky growth he just takes it right okay for every five feet so he's got how many feet to go through uh 35 he's got, he's got like well he's got 10 feet if he like tries to go around but uh athera go ahead and roll 44 Oh, is he gonna? He's gonna back out toward Kata and try and do this shit. No, it's he's basically gonna go sideways. Yeah, it's gonna go lateral. Lateral. Kata, did um, did you actually stop there or like Wait, one you square did say a over? Well, well, well he, he, he's yeah. Is that actually where the the fireball's at? I uh -huh. know that he's at the edge of the map, so I would have been here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, do. Just, I just checking. know he's the map. Just checking. I wouldn't have stopped right next to the fireball. So this so... poor, just, like, shamed dude is running with spikes in his feet and a javelin through his stomach now. And he has to make a concentration check. Oh! Wait! Hold on! Roll that back! For every bit of damage, he has to make a concentration check to hold on to that expeditious retreat. So, so he needs to make... Uh, what three of these it, now? I, I think it doesn't even fucking matter. He basically makes it to here and just kind of falls. His top half is like kind of just kind of, kind of like clawing its way out of the spiked growth as it just kind of entwines around his waist and legs, and then finally he just collapses. Quick, <laughs> run over thorns. and start kicking him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we out? Of, are we out of combat? You are out of combat. All right, I want to come over. Is he still breathing? Uh, he is heavily bleeding out. <laughs> but but he's breathing, right? Uh, make a medicine check. All right, let's see here. <laughs> uh, the, the final grasps of life are fading from him within moments. Do we want to talk to him? Quick! Did we? No? Yes? I'll take that as a no. Sure. Grab, grab the javelin. <laughs> are, are you sure? Yeah, Arx will come fucking double move his ass up over here and slap him in the face with a cure. Yeah. Literally by slapping him across the face. Yep. I was gonna say, you basically had a round to heal him if you wanted, but... I was gonna restab him with the javelin. 
Uh, well, the devil is like still in him as he's getting healed. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll pull it out as he heals him. <laughs> Just be ready to re-stab it into him. Yeah, no I'm gonna deal. hold it. <laughs> So you just come over. He's uh, he's uh, he's basically breathing his last breath. He's like, ah. and then you slap. He's like, ah, and then she takes it out the javelin. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's just wake up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll say he's awake now, but he is looking up with those dark, sunken eyes. Well, don't forget, he's. Like at the edge of the spike trap. <laughs> yeah, we can just push him back in. <laughs> and as um as you slap him back to consciousness, goes, kill me. Oh, we will. Maybe he, like already dead. I'm dead. <laughs> well, he he's pleading for it basically. No, he's not undead. He's actually alive. It's just he um really really pale. He's just really pale. Like he's um even up close you can tell he's got no hair or if he did it's basically all fallen out. He's basically kind of the sick spindly echo of a human. We'll we'll give you that sweet release that you want after we get the information we need. Well, hold on. I didn't agree to any of that nonsense. But wait. If he doesn't give you the information, we'll just tie him up to the wagon wheel and take it with us. Oh, all right. Well, that's fair. Uh, in that case, we're going to have a quick conversation there, my friend. You're going to tell us first what the fuck you are. He just kind of sneers. I don't have to say anything to the likes of you. Kind of hold, spits on your boot. Hold on. Just just hold on a second. I got a couple more of these spells. And so Arux will grab him by the collar and just start dragging his face through the, uh, <laughs> the edge of the spike trap. As you heal him? Uh, well, I mean, he's, if he he's looks like he's about to expire again, he'll pull him out and heal him again. <laughs> you just so you drag him through, just, ah, 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 and then he falls unconscious, and you just slap him with another heel. Oh yeah, <laughs> that got dark. Look, I'm tired of everyone's shit. This guy has answers we need, so I'm I'm all for this. Let's go to this. You guys do that. Bumble will free the prisoners. Oh, That's fair. Yeah. Um... Oh, get our kobold. Athena, he's all yours. What? Cobbled pet. Yeah, the the the, uh, the bottom half of a kobold sticking up from the snow. Oh, I'll go fetch him. Grab um, his leash. He has a leash. You you yes. now have a knob on the leash. Yes. Yes, he has a leash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So th this prisoner car, as they, um, as they, the uh, prisoners look to you, the um, the white kobold closest to you just kind of utters, "The rubbed figure. He has the key." Uh, to which you find that. At the um, kind of like the back paneling, where it seems to like it would open up, there is a padlock keeping the doors shut on this iron cart. Sorry, zoning out a little. Um, just grabbing the lock with the spark-ridden hands. He's just gonna keep zapping that thing until it just straight up breaks. Uh, okay. I feel like that's not how electricity works, but alright. Eh, do it long enough, that's something arc welders. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Just hit it with some acid, dude. Yeah. Okay. Just bite it, you're a gnome. There you go. <laughs> um. I don't eat metal. 
vegetarian. I'll say after enough zaps, the lock basically explodes into a, a plume of shrapnel. Uh, roll a reflex save. Sure. <laughs> Okay. You take a point of damage from fr shrapnel. <laughs> Ow. Got iron splinter. Suck. <laughs> um. Uh, but. Um, <laughs> after enough drags through the spiky growth and heals, he um he eventually does kind of raise one of these uh bony fingered hands up. He says, "Stop! Stop! I yield! No more!" Oh, now he wants to talk. Where are the rest of the prisoners? There's... There's many in the mines. They've been... slowly being split between the mines and... the master's castle. Okay, how many of you are there? I am one of five. We are our master's servants, his chosen select. As he kind of gestures the uh, the amulet around his neck, which, um, as you're given the opportunity to inspect it, looks like uh, this. like a glove basically it's like um it looks like it could have been like a fully formed hand but as you look where the fingers are missing there are kind of um holes which suggest like attachable parts the one he's got has the pinky i.e his master is an edgy teenager that loved fingerless clubs oh my god <laughs> <laughs> we we have to walk around and kick the ass of all five of these douchebags just to get the fucking finger. <laughs> uh. What are the fingers for? They're to signify our ranking. I am the weakest. <laughs> it goes in ascension with the thumb being our lieutenant. Wait, so you're telling me that your rankings are bank based on fingers? And your sergeant or master guy isn't the middle one? Get some issues there, bro. No, the master is the thumb. I know, that's what I'm saying. The master oh, okay. isn't the middle figure. Uh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. It's like, I do not question our master's orders or his intelligence. Oh, so you think it's stupid, too? Nah, he's got a thumb on the situation. <laughs> oh, lordy. There we go. Now we got the shocker going on here. God damn it. <laughs> All that effort I went to, and you made it a fucking peace sign. Alrighty. I like Colwyn's idea. How many of the robot guys are there? There are... There are many. Horses are not to be trifled with. We suffered a bit of a loss in Silmark, but we still have many in number and many more to make. So Arux kind of frowns down at this guy and strokes his uh, his chin just a bit because he's a, a fucking dragonborn and doesn't have a beard. And then clears his throat and tries to imitate what this guy says word for word in the best approximation of his really awkwardly scratchy accent. <laughs> so let me know if this is something that we can pull off Probably. What are you trying to do? 
So Rx is trying to imitate this guy as much as he possibly can in terms of uh, the way that he sounds. Like, he's trying to basically get a flawless impression of this dude. Oh, yeah, with that... You, you start to give him an existential crisis. Perfect. So once this guy starts looking like he's losing it, he goes, perfect, back in his own normal voice again. I'm going to need that cloak of yours. Anyway, are you ready for a question, the most important one that we have now? How do you control the things? Uh... He keeps lip shut about that. <sighs> Rx. But you do notice that he does have the um, the circlet around his head that is still kind of faintly glowing with a purple gem in the middle. That's all right. I think I found it out. And uh, Rx will reach down and take the circlet off of him and put it on his own head. No, no! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's pretty fashionable, let me tell you. I, I changed my mind about your looks. You've got some style there, friend. You could use some pointers, but, well, we'll get you there. Kata, would you care to do the honors of giving him his appropriate new uh, garb uh, after oh. after we take those rubs off, of course? Oh, oh, you mean the one that he wanted us to do all along? Yes, that one. All right. I'm going to take the great axe, line it up right on the back of his neck, like, all right, don't move, because if it takes more than one chop, it, it gets a little ugly. And I'm going to chop his head off. Um, and in the moments you do, you just hear, We shall all pay. Oh, all right. these, these cultists, they all remind me of teenagers. Dressed well. in dark black robes, fingerless gloves. Colin's going to take this opportunity to, to do a little science experiment, and he's going to continue to talk with the head for as long as it's able to communicate. <laughs> How does that work? For that in two minutes, that's... the brain doesn't have oxygen. Right. That's slightly disturbing. <laughs> are you doing this out loud, or are you doing no, it no, in this is head? all mental. Okay. All right. Then. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well. So Rx is going to throw on the robes and uh, kind of keep the hood down for the moment and look at himself over and go, you know, I could actually probably pull this off. It needs a little bit of tailoring. It's kind of loose fitting and, and shapeless here, but I think I could manage it. What do you think? I think it looks good. Although, you know, I'm probably going to need some needle and thread for all of these holes that we put in it. Add it adds flavor. Mm, you got a point there. <laughs> all right well with all of this guy's effects we're going to head over here who needs new bubble thread. and company you got magic. perfect and this is why we keep you around bubble <laughs> for the fish of course um while this is going on um athera as you uh recover knob from his uh Doug trenched in the snow. Um, you notice he seems a bit apprehensive to approach once he notices that there's something in the midst, and he seems rather reluctant to go any further, kind of hiding himself behind a tree near you. Please knob. Knob. Hey, knob! It's a um. good thing we're here, because you obviously cannot do anything for your god. None. Harsh. Wow, that's that's cold. Uh, Nod begins to whimper, and there you can kind of see the first dribbles of tears coming out. I'm a bitch. Yeah, a little bit. Fucking rude as shit. I will. <laughs> I'll kneel down and wrap my arms around him in a comforting way. Um, he just seems to be muttering to himself about how useless he is. 
It's okay. They're there. Uh, however, those of you next to the prison cart, um, the uh, the people in there are kind of just looking around cautiously. Is it is it safe to come out? Come on, come on, come on. You're fine. And I'll help them out. Wait, off of my hand. We kind of step out one by one. Are you all from the village? Town? City? Whatever it was? Um, the four obvious peasantry will respond. Yes, they will. They will say that they were um, among the ones who were taken from Selmark and exported here, and since then they've been enslaved to work in the mines, uh, digging up the uh, iron veins that are hauled to uh, the keep on a daily basis. Um, they'll also mention that occasionally. One of the fingers, as they kind of look over to uh, uh, Pinky's dead body, um, will look among them and select a few to be taken. Uh, those who have been taken so far have never returned. Do you um, know where they take them? They just kind of point up towards the, uh, the snowy overcast, which again has been keeping the top portion of this island uh, uh, obscured. So these these guys in armor all attacked us with um, just their fists, right? Just their fists. Well, balls. That gives us nothing to arm these people with. Yep. And then about... um, the armor yeah. itself is completely obliterated after your fight. Like you guys did heavy amounts of damage to them. Yeah, what are we going to do with these guys now? It's not like we can take them with us. Well, we have to get them back to the boat somehow. That's so far away, though. The cart presumably has horses on it. No, they were being pulled by the tall men. <laughs> well, on the plus side, we just need to go find some more tall men. I mean, we know where the mines are in essence, right? Um, before we go too much further, one little piece of detail. If, I don't know if we addressed the glowing circlet on the uh, mage's head. Did we examine that? No, it's currently on my head right now. Uh, I want to ritual detect magic to find out what that does. And are we... Uh, real quick, who needs a short rest and who needs a long rest? Ideally a long rest, but I don't want to get set on Ideally. by another dragon. Yeah. How much time did the dragon give us anyways? I don't remember. Uh, I gave you three days. This is currently the first day. Yeah, we could take a long rest. You can get away with it. Long rest would be the best. Let's try and get these guys back to the fucking boat, and then we can long rest on the boat. And retrace our steps all the way back up here? I mean, yeah, but, you know, this time we can pretend to be a dude in a fucking cloak. Well, let's remember the robots. Mm -hmm. Let's remember the original purpose was to free the prisoners. This was only like, like a small bit of them, and it took us a day to get up this far. It took us a day to get up this far because we were being sneaky about it. And also searching for a cave. When in reality, these fucking assholes are like wearing the hand of Egon or whatever, from what I can tell. Yes, um, well, if, if you'd like to, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite obvious that the amulet does designate the hand of Egon, given its design. Um, does it, are we able to tell if it would be able to function as the uh, hand of Egon if all of the fingers were associated and put together into it? Um... Or is it just kind of a representation of it? Because, like, if we have the hand and a finger, then that's awesome. But if we have, like, an actual finger of the hand of Econ and then just some shitty tin fucking hand, then, you know. Uh. Let's see, detect magic, sense magic. I'd assume that the bigger, like, the boss guy has the actual hand. 
Probably, but I mean, it'd be good if we at least had a finger. Um. Well, like, like I said, you basically have the the palm segment and a finger. You also recall. Um, I'll, I'll say you can also recall that when you had had snuck by one of the other ones that was basically coming to and fro from this camp. Um, he had a similar one with a palm attachment, but a different. Thing. Interesting. But the palm does seem like it's part of the original artifact. Right. Um, like it's basically like the palm seems to be like a common element, but each of the fingers are individualized. Gotcha. So maybe the hand is more made up of the fingers, and the palm is pretty interchangeable. Yeah. Gotcha. That's good to know. Uh, Mark wanted to ask about the circlet. Uh, yes. So, sense magic. You can use action. Uh, you learn about the school of magic. Um, the circlet is in fact magical. Um, as for the school of magic, uh. Uh, uh, it is enchantment. That doesn't really help us, unfortunately. Um, Are we able to so, roll knowledge arcana, maybe, to identify what the fuck it actually does? I would so, say so. I was going to say, otherwise you can uh, just uh, attune to it. Yep. Uh, five, Jesus. Yeah, it, it's hard to tell just from its simplistic design. However, Bumble... Um, you may have, you know, encountered some of, uh, some essence of the notes concerning this kind of magic, and it does seem that, um, the circlet would allow you to issue commands to certain types of creatures, um, and you could easily just, you know, conclude that it's designed to order around the tall men. Um, but as a magic item, it, it would require a moment. So, um, asking the prisoners, how many more people are there? Um... Where are they? Where did you come from? Where, where did you go? You go? <laughs> where did you come from, Katna Joe? Um, so again, they'll, they'll say they were among some of the folks that were taken from Silmark, but um, they'll report that in the mines there are others that were taken from other places. They, One of them mentioned someone that they had met that was a part of a merchant caravan that was attacked. Um, as for how many, um, they would probably guess is around 20 to 30 people in the mines working, um, but a few of them are carted up uh, not every day, but every so often, whenever a finger comes around and kind of routinely inspects them. Um, there are also many of the fugitives who are kind of acting as a watchman in, in the mines. Um, they're also very abusive. Mm -hmm. One of them kind of lifts up their shirt and shows like a, a line of uh, um, where you would have guessed like a whip cracked. Um, the entrance to the mine is if you just follow this ro road it basically leads into a mining outpost um, palisaded walls uh, fairly guarded by the fugitives Do the mines only have the one borehole? Um, air vents no alternate ways to get it as far as they're aware, but as you ask that, the kobolds step forward. Um, and they say that they can tell you where the secret entrances are. But given that you and your comrades are pretty strong and have managed to fell one of the fingers, they will only tell you this information if you can guarantee the freedom of their kobold kin, who are also trapped in the mines. Bringing all the prisoners, so yeah. Um, they will mention that the openings and secret areas that they're aware of would only work for uh, small folk, namely your size bumble. Because, um, again, the, the kobolds are small themselves. 
Like they stand basically at like a um, just barely at chest height compared to the humans, but um, they know a few ways in and out that the uh, they're sure that the Watchmen haven't caught on to yet. That's how they've been able to sneak in food ration. Have there ever been any uh, cave-ins or rocks falls or settling in the mines? Like, is that a particularly unusual occurrence? Um, they will occasionally... Um, they will say that one of the things that the fugitives like to do is they like to um, light a stick of dynamite and send one of the uh, innocents down deeper into the mines. A whole bunch of shattering rock may not be noticed. For the most part, yes. Seems like the place might be pretty unstable to begin with, mm. from the sound of it. Um, the mines themselves, they'll they'll ba basically give you the information. Basically, like, um, up to a certain extent in the mines, um, things are pretty well structured and fortified. It's just that tunneling deeper, they're, you know, using dynamite to expand, clear out more space. I'm gonna get my hands on some of that dynamite. Um... What are we doing with the prisoners? Are we going back to the boat? Are we sending them on their own way? We should probably head back to the boat and uh, take a rest. Well, uh, Nob. Nob Perks. What's your influence around here? Um, like, do people listen to you? As you call out his name, the two white kobolds next to you basically, Nob. Nob was banished. Recognize Nob or just the name? Well, I assume Kata would like look over and they kind of turn their heads and can see him kind of peeking his head from behind a tree. Yeah. Um, again, Nob just seems all the more apprehensive and is kind of like hugging into Athera at this time. Excellent. I comfort it. Um, Why was he uh, exiled? Uh, they will mention that he follows the path of, a, of another figure of power other than the Dragon Queen. Um, and so as per the rules of their society, he was exiled so long as he continued to worship the, uh, the foreign god. Interesting. All right. Uh, they'll also mention that if the queen sees you with him, she will likely kill you all. Noted. Doubled queen is also imprisoned in the mines. No, 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 no they're, the they're, they're referring to the dragon. They they will they will refer to her as her Majesty, as you will have right, heard right, uh, right, right. Nob refer to her as. That's fine. I forgot about that. I kind of want to send them off to the boat on their own because I feel like we're wasting too much time ourselves going back and forth, but at the same time... Right, I'm thinking have Nob take them. Right, but we need to rest some fucking where. We could camp out again. True, I guess. Unless we want to, you know, not get eaten by winter wolves. Yeah. Please. I imagine a forest gnome be able to uh, direct people on how to safely sleep in a tree. <laughs> um, I think at this stage, why don't we just go to the map so we have... Uh, so let's say you guys... You guys are basically right... There. So the Winter Wolves were in this forest. Chance of them being. Um. Nature? The kobolds will actually tell you this information since they're natives of the island. 
Um, they'll tell you that the forest to the east is predominantly the winter wolf territory. Um, it is also full. It is also the home to a creature um, to which has no name, but they regard with horrifics and is basically their version of the boogeyman. Um, not even their queen has been able to find him and slay him as per their begging. But um, every 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 time every now and again, um, a kobold will go missing, and they they think he's to blame. But uh, other than that, the winter wolves don't tend to reach out from their territory very much, since the queen tends to guard the western half of the island and use the winter wolves as sport. East forest is wolves, west forest is dragon. We're already working for the dragon, so she would have no reason to attack us. Right. Alright, let's go back down the slope here a little bit and hit up the west forest, I guess. As far as the prisoners, do we say? On their so own? Keep them with us? I'd say send them back to the to the boat with Nob. I'd like to do that too. Send them along the very edge of the mountainous here, out of the forests. Um, How do we guarantee that Nob works with us, though? Promise him we'll help him find his journal if he does that. Is yeah, we yeah, we're gonna help him get his amulet. Um, we're all I terrible will... people. <laughs> I will make mention that when you were um, (laughs) basically looking here, um, it is kind of a a staggered drop down to the ship this way. Um, It's a bit of a hazardous territory. Going uh, going along the coastline would be longer, but safer. Give him my climbing kit. That has ropes and stuff in it. Okay. We have a climber's kit if you just want to give it to them. Oh my god, I have so much rope. I would, I would just give him the climber's kit. <laughs> give him a climber's kit and a little bit of rope. <laughs> um, a few of the villagers will remark that they're not familiar with that equipment. Most of them are just fishmongers. I mean, it's rope. <laughs> well, it's also a if climbing anything, kit. fishmongers would be ex- excellent at using rope. We'll give them a few seconds to show them how to put the halter on. Right. We'll do a class. We'll have everyone gather around, and and we'll have people, you know, have a couple people with our climbing kits, and they can practice, and you know, put them on one another, and figure out how it works, mm. and then they'll switch, and you know, it'll be good. What time um, of day is one, it? Right one now? curious villager will ask what you intend to do about. Um, They'll kind of nudge with their head over towards the uh, the, the naked body of Pinky over there. Um, Bury him in a snowdrift, probably. Why? Um, if, if the fingers notice he's missing, more may come and imbue harsher punishment upon the rest of the people in the mines. So mm-hmm. Arox immediately takes the robe that he's currently wearing, which was Pinky's robe, and flips up the hood and imitates his voice as he goes... We'll just have to institute much harsher punishments on these vagabonds, then. In Pinky's voice. <laughs> um, you get a couple of claps from your very good impression. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Now, we have to get you gentlemen and ladies to safety. All right. Um, time of day. Time of day. Uh, it's nearing the evening, um, to be reminded that in this very same day you found Nob and have been going from the cliffside where you, again, were able to see your boat over to here, of which would take and have, which would have taken several hours. So it's kind of like, we'll say, uh, between three and four-ish. I would um, I would say uh, let the prisoners stay with us tonight, and send them to the boat during the day. Bulls are nocturnal. Okay. 
I have less likelihood of running into those dire wolves in the day. All right. Find a suitable camping spot, you know, decently obscured, what have you. you know, little, uh, alarm spell routine. Proximity alarm. All right. That's good. Um, yeah, and since you have the kobolds with you, um, you won't even have to roll survival checks. They'll kind of lead you to an advantageous spot, which is kind of at a height so you can see a number of things if they were coming. So basically, um, they're leading us to cob holes? Basically. Um, uh, you, as as they, they kind of like lead you about the eastern forest, they kind of um, almost for moments kind of maneuver like dogs. Um, they're kind of like sniffing around, um, kind of tilting their heads, trying this way and that. Um, they're kind of using some kind of like sense or perhaps um, marking in the air. And uh, they do kind of take you to one of their, their hidden spots. So you guys uh, earn a good long rest, likely without interruption, given the um, the general secludedness of this particular location. Um, it's, it's a little bit cramped, because, again, it's intended for kobolds, but... <laughs> You're able to kind of like squeeze in, butting elbows just a bit. We uh, cuddle. It's a cuddle puddle. <laughs> uh, by which point, um, uh, Oryx. Oryx, you're also wearing the amulet, right? Uh, the necklace? Like, the, the hand? Yeah, the, the hand. I mean, probably, if, uh... If Actually, Pinky, if Pinky was wearing them, then he'd be wearing them. Um, yeah. you're also wearing... So you're attuning to the circlet, right? Yes. Okay. Um... So after a bit of time, uh, on the circlet, uh... It does a tune. You kind of feel the flow of its power kind of stir around your brain. Um, basically, what you get is that um, you would need to find a number of the either small men or tall men. Um, the small men are easier to kind of... Basically, the small men and tall men also kind of work like magical items in that they have to be attuned to a circlet. Okay. Um... But what is your intelligence? Uh, ten. ten. Okay, so uh, you would be able to basically get five hit die worth of uh, small men or tall men at your side. Um, so like one small man. Yeah, so a small man is one hit die, a tall man is four. Well, that's good. I'll just have a couple midgets hanging out with me. Um, but you'd have to find them first and obviously attune them to your circlet. But you do have right. that ability on your next occasion and finding some. Yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. Um, so. Uh, we're at a good point. Do we want to continue? How are you feeling, Mark? No, I'd, I'd rather call it here. It's a good spot. All right. Sounds good. So, when we pick up next time, uh, not next week, but the week after, uh, we'll resume as you guys stir from your cozy kobold. Uh, at this point, I will say you guys have leveled up. Okay. <laughs> Extra attack! <laughs> totally needed. Yeah. I don't even remember what I get. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs>